Join us at the free ABMPCE Summit on Monday, March 21st. This one-day online conference focuses on fascia and takes learners on a journey from understanding fascia, what it looks like, its role in the body in different types, to working with it using multiple modalities and techniques. Instructors include keynote presenter Dr. Robert Schleip and CE course instructors Rochelle Clausen, Allison Denny, Joy Edwards, Gil Headley, David Lazondak, Whitney Lowe, Till Luca, and Kathy Ryan. This event and four hours of CE is free for everyone in the profession. Visit abmp.com slash summit to learn more and register today. ABMP members get 20% off the list price on all hand spring publishing titles, including Fascia, What It Is and Why It Matters by David Lazondak and Fascia in Sport and Movement 2nd Edition by Robert Schleip and Jan Vilka. Visit handspringpublishing.com to learn about these and other books. ABMP members visit abmp.com slash discounts to access your discount code to save 20% on all list prices with free shipping to U.S. and U.K. addresses. Find your next favorite book at handspringpublishing.com. Hello and welcome to the ABMP podcast. I'm Kristen Coverly. My co-host Darren Buford is enjoying some well-deserved time off. So I am doing a solo pod today and I am so lucky and honored to be joined today by Gil Headley. Gil has been teaching integral anatomy in the lab, lecture hall, and online at gilheadley.com since 1995 to professionals from the entire range of healing and fitness modalities. He is the producer of the Integral Anatomy series, the author of several books of poetry and prose, and has created the Anatomy from A to Z Project, a comprehensive 240 on-camera tour of human anatomy based on his integral whole body approach. All of his content is now available online. Gil is based in Colorado Springs, Colorado, where he presides over the board of directors of the Institute for Anatomical Research, a 501c3 nonprofit corporation focused on expanding the study of integral anatomy through cadaver studies. In addition to all of that, Gil is teaching one of the CE courses at the upcoming ABMP CE Summit on Fascia. And listeners, if you haven't registered yet, that event is free for everyone in the profession, including four hours of CE. You can learn more and register at abmp.com slash summit. Welcome, Gil. I'm so happy to have you here with us today. Woo-hoo, you're hired. I want that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun bio to read because as we'll learn more in our conversation, you have really done so much in anatomy and dissection and integral anatomy, which we want to talk about too. Tell us a little bit more about how that all got started for you. Why anatomy? Why dissection? I My anatomy interest started really early. I, In fact, I, I don't think you can see it in the background, but I have this calendar from high school with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno and, and Frank Zane and, and Franco Colombo all flexing at the Mr. Olympia 1975 contest or something like that. I was a fan and I thought, wow, I, I want to know my muscles and started learning anatomy, but I didn't take it up in earnest in the dissection lab until after graduate school when I had trained as a massage therapist and a rolfer. And I was thinking, wow, I want to see what I touch. And I, I, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, with all due respect to the, uh, those unsighted among us, I thought, I think I could see this. (laughs) So I'm going to go to the lab and see what I'm touching. And it was, uh, it was, there was no leaving it. Once I started, it was like one potato chip. You can't stop. Absolutely. And tell us a little bit more about integral anatomy and your philosophy around anatomy. Well, I'll tell you, when I was at the Rolf Institute, I was exposed to Tom Myers and, and Till Lukau, folks I know who you're familiar with. They were running the pre-training at the Rolf Institute while I was a grad student in ethics uh, many years ago, 30 years ago. And, um, and I, you know, 
as they have a very holistic, you know, approach to the body, as do the as does the massage profession and many other modalities. When I got to the lab, you know, all I had was Grant's Atlas and, and Grant's dissector, which was very much regional anatomy. And I'm like, well, if you follow these instructions here uh, to the letter and do a nice medical dissection, you wipe out everything you wanted to see, <laughs> uh, which is exactly what I did in my first solo dissection. And and I was like. I want to see these layers that they talked about. I want to see the fascia. You know, I don't want to just hack it up. And so I I kind of dreamt up an approach to dissection that would reflect our holistic uh, philosophies. And I ended up calling it integral anatomy. And I do feel that I've kind of created an in-house approach to anatomy, as it were. So regional anatomy, which is what we're mostly using in our professions, is borrowed from the medical establishment and doesn't necessarily reflect the the way we do things or the, the how what we feel or how we see it. And so integral anatomy, uh, instead of emphasizing, you know, parts uh, and areas of the body that get named and put in boxes, my interest is in uh, demonstrating the relationships and whole body continuities and textural layers that we feel when we touch people and and that we affect and that have no um, limitation with respect to regions. In other words, I it's great. You want your surgeon to know his regional anatomy or her regional anatomy so that when you're saying go for the axillary artery, <laughs> they're not too, they're not behind your knee, right? They're they're in your armpit. And that's good. So those words are valuable and, and integral anatomy stands on the shoulders of regional anatomy, but it's different because it's reflecting our our interest in continuity, relationship, uh, whole body whole layer textures, uh, textural layers, you know, that, that we palpate, whether it be skin or, or superficial fascia, or deep fascia, you know, membranes, we feel all that with our hands. And I wanted to be able to actually demonstrate them on the whole body to body workers. And so maybe that's a, a start of what makes integral anatomy, integral anatomy. I love that. And I'm so glad you did that because you're right. Our approach to the physical body is different. There's a lot of similarities mm -hmm. to how we approach the body as the medical community, but there are differences too. And we do look at the body in a more holistic whole body approach, including all of the different layers. So I love that. Now, have any medical professionals attended your classes and been really sort of wowed and impressed by the way that you do things differently? Oh, absolutely. And I got many, many nice compliments and feedbacks at the many universities that I've taught at where there I am in a med school lab, kind of borrowing it or hiring it as it were. And then the professors who teach there walk by the tables and they're like, oh my gosh, like I've never seen that in my whole career. That's amazing. I've had professors say, that's the way anatomy should be done. I've had professors say, our students in an entire semester don't get what your students get in six days. I, I've heard that out of the mouths of people who've written the textbooks for the medical dissectors, you know. So uh, I know I know that they they love it. They just can't do it, you know. It, it doesn't it doesn't quite match the, their curriculum, uh, but it matches ours for sure. And we don't need to limit ourselves to the the approaches of the medical community, with all due respect and appreciation for everything that they do. We have a whole another way of doing it. And we also start, you know, in integral anatomy with the individual. I think that's one of the really important parts about integral anatomy is that I'm, I'm looking to see 100% perfect human anatomy in every, in every form that I approach. So what's in front of me is the truth, not what's in the book, right? So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm needing to, uh, I like to emphasize that. Rather than starting with the mean or the average body that you see in a medical textbook where they've looked at a thousand bodies and drawn an average, that average is nobody. And us massage therapists and rolfers and structural integrators and movement educators uh, and, and uh, yoga and, and, and all those folks, we're dealing with the, a real person in front of us. Um, and, uh, and every surgeon knows this too. The surgeons are on our page right? Working with the individual because you can't go from your textbook to the, a body in front of you and expect it to match. Uh, they have to deal with exactly what's in front of them and treat exactly what's in front of them. And I think that's the same thing for massage therapists. You know, we, we, you, you don't want to be 
having an idea of a book in your brain and working on a book on the body in front of you. You want to work on the person in front of you and everything that they present. And it's accurate. It's always accurate. The book is the one that's mistaken. Gil, let's talk a little bit more about fascia. Many of us learn about it in school, but yet it remains a mystery, the mysterious <laughs> fascia. So let's start at the very beginning. If someone were to come to you, I'm going to come to you and say, Gil, what is fascia? Well, fascia is, is um, a subset of one of the four tissues of the body. So we have epithelium, we have nervous tissue, we have muscle tissue, and we have connective tissue. And fascia is a, a type of connective tissue. It fits into that box. And it's the type that covers and wraps things, uh, particularly. It's a whole body communication system, part of our proprioceptive communication. It's loaded with nerves. And it's kind of like, like you can cut it into sheets. And that's how it gets its name, like a facing or a fascia, right? So, so fascia is, is the, the interfaces between other structures. Connective tissue writ larger could be, you know, basically the, the negative of the muscle, musculoskeletal form that we know because it, it, it wraps every one of those tissues. But I don't like to think of it in negative terms. For me, fascia is a pure positive. Uh, and if you come to an understanding of the different types of fascia and connect with its importance to healthy movement, I think you'll have an opportunity to connect your hands to things you already know in a more informed way that can serve your clients uh, much better. Yeah. You mentioned different types of fascia. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Can you walk us through the different fascial layers? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, if we just start out at the, at the skin, right? Well, people don't tend to think of skin as having a fascia layer, but the dermis is a and like a fishnet stocking weave of collagen fibers that are quite thick. And it's a, it's a fascial layer. And, and then it, it, it kind of blends into the next, the adiposal layer, which we call say, say subcutaneous adipose or, or the fat underneath your skin. That's so characteristic of the human species. And um, Henry Gray called that superficial fascia, that fatty layer. Uh, and if you do what I've done, which is to kind of mash all the fat out of it and look at the fat, the fascial part of it, as it were, and adip adipocytes are connective tissue cells, but we tend not to think of them that way. You can see that our body is wrapped in this whole, whole fleece of, of yellow fascia um, that has more or less adipose in it. And this is a very important metabolic organ in our body. And that layer, if you just grab your arm and schloof, schloof your skin back and forth a little bit, you'll see that it's sort of slick and moves. And that's because between that fatty layer and what we call deep fascia or, or, or dense regular fibrous fascia is what I call perifascia, which is a, a membranous layer that allows for differential movement between your skin and the fatty layer, the skin and superficial fascia and the deep fascia. So uh, what I call perifascia is the interface between everything that moves relative to each other in the musculoskeletal form. And once you get a grip on that and realize how important it is for movement and how much you're affecting it when you touch, and uh, then you're going to, um, you might work a little more gently because it just likes a little petting and it softens right up <laughs> as opposed to jamming your elbow into it or something which people like to do because they're imagining that the deep fascia or the dense regular fibrous fascia is very reconformable. And while it is in the long run, and it's kind of like strapping tape in a sense, it has lots of strings in it, you know, strings of fibers that are often in multiple layers. And that's really, to my mind, that fascia, the deep fascia, as opposed to the membranous slippery perifascia or the, or the adiposal superficial fascia or the or the fishnet weave of the dermis, that that deep regular uh, fibrous fascia. To me, I call it exoskeleton. It's like it's it's really part of our structure, a structural element of our skeletal system. It wraps your skeleton, right, as in the form of the periosteum, but also then throws out uh, septa and then forms investments of all of your musculature. So it's an incredibly interesting uh, complex uh, tissue. But it's not as mobile, you know, as the other ones I've mentioned. It's not as mobile as the wet, slippery perifascia. So I feel like when we're looking to serve a person's movement function, 
Um, we do well to pay attention to, to the most mobile ones of them, because when that movement is impinged, we can go there maybe to resolve it. And all movement problems aren't an issue of muscle tone. You know, they can be an issue of, of fascial stat status, whether it's inflamed or gummy or dehydrated or static, you know, and put something that's supposed to move that's gone static on you. Let's take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Anatomy Trains is delighted to invite you to our in-person fascial dissection workshop, May 30th through June 3rd, 2022. We're excited to be back in the lab with Anatomy Trains author Tom Myers and master dissector Todd Garcia in Todd's Laboratory of Anatomical Enlightenment in Boulder, Colorado. Join students from around the world and from all types of manual, movement, and fitness professions to explore the real human form, not the images you get from books. Visit anatomytrains.com for details. Universal Companies knows you're busy. So stop searching around and get all of your massage and bodywork products, supplies, equipment, and education in one place. Universal Companies. With 40 years of experience and professionals like you on staff, you can trust your needs will be met. Explore the website and go to universalcompanies.com slash ABMP for a special discount just for ABMP podcast listeners. That's universalcompanies.com slash ABMP. Now let's get back to the podcast. Gil, do you have your own movement exercise flow that you do each day? What do you suggest? <laughs> Tell us a more about that. I, I live on a mountainous property that's covered in, in kindling, basically. <laughs> so like the last couple of days, I've spent gathering wood. And I like functional movement. I like to do real things uh, with my body that demand of me to bend over or get a going or, or jog over here or twist this way and to do every which way. I, for many years, practiced Tai Chi. And that was definitely an opening for me as a very rigid, Catholic, pious graduate student studying ethics. And, and Tai Chi kind of broke me out of that mold but it just put me in another mold. And after about seven years of that, I thought I was going to go insane and that I, I just need to move any which way, you know, and not in a pattern, not in a, not in a mudra of, of physicality, you know, that it had to be whatever is needs doing. So my practice, if it's anything, is to try not to keep doing the same thing. Right. And, and by doing that, you can discover and explore, um, you know, aspects of your form that might be, left aside due to your belief systems or, or, or what have you. Or the fact that most of us sit a lot of the day, even we, massage therapists yeah. who work, you know, who have a very active job a few hours of the day, but certainly not all day. So I love that thinking about movement, thinking about doing different things every day and doing different movements every day. Yeah. Because whatever you get into a lot, that's going to create a movement rut. You know, so, I mean, when I was a teenager, we had the, the universal machine, which no one this era knows about, you know, because we have such fancy equipment in the gyms now, but we didn't have fancy equipment in the in the 70s. It was extremely limited. And all the kids walked around, including myself, moving with the range of motion of that machine. And so, you know, whatever you do, do it differently the next time. And I learned, I did learn that from Emily Conrad, who was, uh, Emily, she was Emily Conrad Daoud back when I knew her, but she, she changed her name to just Emily Conrad, founder of Continuum. And she, she was just the queen of moving differently. You know, she didn't care if it was pretty or ugly. She, she was going to, going to move in a way that took advantage of what movement could happen in a body. And if she found a little bit of movement, she'd press up against that and, and move a little more and, you know, and teach people that and get paralyzed people out of wheelchairs as a result of it. Because, you know, even if you can twitch your eyebrows, you know, she, she would start, she, okay, twitch. And can you feel how the corner of your eye kind of caught a ride on your eyebrow? Well, go play with the corner of your eye now. And she was just brilliant. Um, and I, I learned a lot from, from her. Gil, you mentioned earlier that when working with fascia, fascia often responds 
better to a gentle pressure, gentle touch versus the elbow, you know, into the tissue. Can you tell us a little bit more about how we as massage therapists and body workers can think about the fascial layers while we're working and different approaches to our work that will have a more beneficial result on the fascial layers? Yeah, I think that each um, layer of our body, and I do like to talk about textural layers a lot. People know that. Some people get offended by the idea of a layer, like the body is a whole. I'm like, yeah, it's a whole, but uh, it differentiates into absolutely distinct textural layers that I can identify and cut up with a knife. So I'm going to run with layers. And the the, the thing is that each maybe each layer or each textural layer can be considered a, a frequency, right? Like like on a like on a radio, and you turn the dial a little bit, and you get a different station. One plays country, one plays uh, Christian music, one plays rock and roll, classical. Then you need to touch them according to their frequencies, right? So if you connect and learn with what a given tissue responds to in terms of touch. You'll get further with it, you know. So a horse, you go stick your elbow in a horse, it's going to kick you, right? Now, humans got just too good manners. And so you stick your elbow in a human and they're just like, thank you, give me more of that. (laughs) Uh, You know, or they might even say they like it, right? Because it's actually kicking up their defenses and, and you're actually arm wrestling with your client's tissues, right? And trying to prove who's stronger. And you often create more resistance in a body with your touch than you do resolution of issues. And, uh, and so if you want to, you know, arm wrestle with your clients and you're the kind of person who's strong, some clients like to be overcome in their resistance. And then you go through that exercise and they give you 50 bucks or 80 bucks and they go home and come back and you do it again next week and nothing happens. Right. But if you gentle and whisper the body, because it's an animal form, right. And, and, it can, it can respond to the gentlest of influences. The planets are influencing your body. The moon and the sun are influencing your body. Do you think you need an elbow to influence the body? You, you can use an elbow. I'm not against it. You know, you use what tool is appropriate, but, but the superficial fascia, for instance, doesn't need an elbow. It needs a nice broad hand petting it and, and, and gently pressing into it and discovering it. And allowing it to expose its soft underbelly to you, like uh, a, like a, a, a cat or an alligator or something <laughs> that lets you pet it, right? Or the the membranous layer, right? It's the slightest flick of that membranous layer echoes and echoes through the whole body. You know, you can c- communicate as deeply as you can imagine by just gently gently connecting intentionally to that membranous layer because it's wet. And just like you can shout at a puddle and that vibration will travel through the whole puddle. You can also just give a little, a little howdy do to the membranous layer and be communicating at the deepest levels. And your client might not believe you. And yet it's effect. If you track the effects are extremely profound and deep. Um, So you don't want to skip that on your way to you know, elbowing into the deep fascia because you believe it's a plastic medium that can be transformed by intense pressure. You know, I think that's that's maybe a, a mistake in how we approach the tissues. And I think too, having a really strong and accurate visual of the tissue under our, our hands helps us adapt our approach. So I love when you were talking about how you got interested in dissection. It really stemmed from the fact that you were in Rolf Institute, you were learning about the body and you really wanted to see what was under your hand. So let's talk a little bit how students respond the first time in the dissection lab. What is their response and what do they tend to be surprised by most about the human body? Well, like myself, I was surprised by how much is there that wasn't in my anatomy books. You don't realize that everything's been cut away to show you these shapes that get names and line, little black line and a word next to it in an anatomy textbook. And you have no clue how much work it took to get down that deep in the body. You don't realize how deep down you are. And so what what I think shocks people is that it takes till Wednesday to get to see a muscle, you know, and it's like, wait a second. And, And people get can get a little frustrated. They're like, I'm, I've been swimming in a sea of, I don't know what this is for two and a half days. Uh, show me something that I know. 
you know, and 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 then people feel more a little grounded. Ben, it is a little swishy washy as you're as you're working your way in there because again, it, it hasn't gotten the time of day uh, in in the regular uh, educational cur- curricula where you would expect that you would find exactly what's in your hands being emphasized in the curriculum. But it tends not to be actually. There's a huge emphasis on words around muscles. And I find that to be kind of putting a cart before the horse, quite literally. It's it's too much advanced information. The, the real beginning appropriate information is to connect to each of those textures in a knowing way so that you can feel, oh, this is the skin. This is the deep part of the skin. This is the fatty buoyant squishy layer here. This is the slippery membrane. This is the dense fibrous layer. This is more slippery membrane underneath the dense fibrous layer. Can you feel that? Then can you feel the muscle? You know, so so the muscle, meaning those protonaceous strands of fiber that have a different textural feel in your hands, not what this named muscle or that named muscle. To me, that's like grad school. You should be, why go to, don't go teaching people Latin who don't know how to tie their shoes, you know, you should be, you know, connect to the first things first. And for me, that's the the textures that anybody can feel. I can teach anyone to feel those things in 10 minutes. And then if you actually learn to connect with them knowingly, you can do tremendous service and have an anatomy vocabulary of about 10, 10 words. You're right. Oftentimes in our training and the way we think about the body first is in terms of the muscles and the musculature. And yeah. there's so much before between the adipose, the skin layer, uh, the dermal mm-hmm. layer and the muscles that we really need to learn more about. And that's yeah, exactly and that, what your that's focus the, is. Su- the surprise. Yeah. And, and when you do see it, there's no unseeing it. You know? and, and I have had so many people write me over the years and who never came to my lab, but who just watched the videos that I make. And they're like, my touch was completely transformed by watching this, that, or the other video. It makes me so happy because I know that they're going to touch differently and more knowingly. And that I get to, I get to work on literally hundreds of thousands of people because their therapist watched a video. So there's a little bit of positive influence there. And they're like, or, or I, ha- I hear back from folks who take a dissection and they're like, oh, my clients are like, what did you do last week? Because this is completely different than what you did the week before. And that makes me really happy. I love that. And mm-hmm. you're right. Seeing, you know, the old adage, seeing is believing when people can see either the videos you make or attend one of your dissection classes, it can only lead to a change. I know it has for me in looking at all of your content online, um, everything you provide. I went to one of your classes. I was lucky enough to attend a course here in Boulder. And it really does, listeners, change the way that you work and the way that you see the human body. So Gil, I want to thank you so much for all that you do to help educate us and bring all this new information to the massage and body work field. It's fantastic. I can't not. I'm compelled. So thank you. <laughs> it's a strange <laughs> mission that the universe has put me on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are appreciative. Thanks, universe, <laughs> <laughs> for doing that for Gil. I'd like to thank our guest today, Gil Headley. Gil, where can listeners go to learn more and see more about your incredible content? Well, I have this incredibly robust website called gilheadley.com. And you could probably misspell it and still get there, but just G-I-L-H-E-D-L-E-Y, gilheadley.com. And I have a free membership there. I, I like to protect my content. So it's behind a membership, but it doesn't cost you anything. And you don't even have to subscribe to my email list. You could just go there and get educated because I believe that's what I'm here to do. And so there's a good 20 hours in the form of four uh, video courses in my free membership um, that will keep you busy. And that is basically documents my learning curve for the last you know, 30 years or something. And um, then there's a uh, there is a subscriber membership of 15 bucks a month and you and or cheaper by the year, and that has a ridiculous amount of content in it uh, that will keep you busy literally for the rest of your career. It's fantastic, please, listeners. 
at some point today, if you haven't already, if you're not already, thumbs aren't moving, typing in that URL, go to Gil's website and just take a look at everything that's there. It's incredible. Gil, thank you so much for this fun and fantastic conversation. I'm looking forward to uh, bringing even more information to our listeners and to the massage and body work profession in your course for the ABMP CE Summit. Thanks again for participating. It's going to be a blast. Oh, you're most welcome. And I do agree. I'll take you deep in that one. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the featured benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com more.